please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Thank you for joining us on this special show. We are calling it 18 for 18. What a run, what a dream run it has been for the Indian equity market 2017. And who would have thought really if you just rewind back and talk about all the gloom and doom that was surrounding us back in December of 2016, demonetization and impending huge indirect tax reform. Well, the Indian market has come a long way and come on top and how almost a uniform one way steady rally. 30% gains on the index, and if you pick the right stocks, then a lot more. So thank you very much for joining us this evening. We're coming to you live from the Bombay Stock Exchange. The exchange, of course, celebrated that magnanimous 34,000 mark on the Sensex just yesterday. I'm Surabhi Upadhyay, Nigel D'Souza with me to take us through the next one hour. And Nigel, I think for 2018, what comes to mind is that I don't know if it's going to be as steady and as beautifully straight as it was this year. But I think it's going to be about the stocks, right? You get the right stocks, you always make money. Isn't Abs that so? Absolutely, sir. But you just said that. You know, we had uh, the Indian index that was up close to around 30%. Mm -hmm. So you'll say, boy, I got it right if I put my money in the index. But you look at the mid-cap and small-cap space, that's up between 45 to around 55%. So that's where the real money was made. And since we're talking about 18, 2018, 18 stocks that we're going to get, well, I remember when I was close to 18, at that point of time, the BSE-listed market capitalization was around, what, 40 lakh crore approximately. The addition in this year is close to around 45 lakh crore, the BSE listed market capitalization. So I don't think we should, uh, you know, wait any longer. Let's get straight to our guest and let's get those 18 picks. The 18 for 2018, ladies and gentlemen. Well, uh, we have our star-studded panel of market experts. You hear them and they've been with you through the journey of wealth creation. Mr. S.P. Tulsian, Aprakash Diban, Amrish Baliga, and Merabu Nirani. Gentlemen, thank you so much for taking out the time and being with us as the year is winding down. Let's get started. The audience and our viewers are waiting with bated breath. Mr. Tulsian, we'll uh, start off with you know, your first uh, call, and it's a very interesting one, I thought. Uh, CG Power, a company that's gone through the motions, split its business into different verticals. Um, is there a big turnaround in the works? What are you expecting from the performance going forward? See, actually, this company did a mistake of foreing into the overseas business, and that was the biggest mistake they did in 2007. If, in fact, their domestic business has been doing quite well, and uh, having realized that mistake, the company has started, in fact, monetizing all the overseas assets maybe for the last three years, 2014, and the, now that seems to be coming to an end. They sold their Ireland unit, Germany unit, Brazil, US, for everywhere, except for Thailand, the transformer-making unit, which has turned around and now contributing in a big way. So practically, if you see pending amount to be received, because many of the deals have been concluded in this last maybe six months or so, so still they have to receive the money from the, from the buyers of those units. And if one sees the financials of the company of 30th September, you will find that on a net of basis, it's a debt-free company, maybe with some cash in their hand. And now companies totally focusing on the Indian business. And as I said, that the Thailand business also, because which is a profit-making, if I just quickly go through, they have a very strong presence in power system and industrial system. And now the two areas, one is transformation and distribution, and second is railways. We all know that railways are now migrating from the diesel to electric locomotives. So, and there the company is enjoying a very good competence, and that is going to give them a very good leeway going forward. In fact, an, an order of about 111 crore has already been received from the, from the railway recently in last one month by the company. If I quickly go through to the financials, company has already posted a standalone income of closure to about 2,600 crore with EBITDA of about 250 crore. And interest, as I said, that major amount has been you know, received in the second half or maybe is going to get received. Now the interest liability was 106 crore. And in spite of that, company had a PBT of 85 crore and PAT of 70 crore. So going forward, I think maybe from FY19, I'm not banking too much on FY18 because that is more for the balance sheet cleaning. This can really see stock is seen to be at an inflection point because of their core competence and focus on the domestic market. So taking all this into consideration, equity is also seen to be quite low at 125 crore. And if I take the market cap and EV, because as I said, it's a debt-free, it's about sub 6,000 crore. And generally, if you take a comparable peers, 
maybe like ABB, Siemens and all that, they always rule at an EV2 sales of about six times, or maybe five to six times, while this company is ruling at an EV2 sales of 1x. So tremendous potential going forward from FY19 onwards. Promoter stake is 35%, but the institutional holding is at 52%. So taking all this into consideration, one can keep an, a target of about 115 in year 2018 on the stock. All right, so that's the first pick that's coming in from Mr. Tulsian. Watch out for that one. Suchi Power is the one that we're talking about. But uh, let's move to Prakash Divan then. Uh, Prakash, this one is a rather interesting one. EIL, I remember they came out with a good set of numbers, and the stock was on fire from there. Uh, you believe that it's good for more? Yeah, so, you know, just before I start explaining EIL and the other uh, picks, just wanted to caution people that this is the first time that instead of focusing on target price, that you're also talking about a decent level or zone to get into. And for this talk, uh, you very rightly said, ever since the Q2 earnings came through, it's, it's actually moved up significantly. Mm -hmm. But I believe you would get, the market will offer us a decent opportunity to enter sometime in the first half, maybe, you know, it's the first quarter itself of 2018. So hold your horses, don't kind of, you know, go and buy on uh, Friday morning or uh, Monday morning. Uh, give time to, for these stocks to, you know, come into that right zone for your uh, buying to make meaningful sense. And Engineers India Limited uh, at current levels is also discounted fairly well. Uh, uh, the reason being, Nigel, the earnings in the hydrocarbon business is a lot dependent on execution. And there's a long way... Uh, you know, the projects are with a very long cycle in mind. It's not like consumer uh, goods or autos where everything is very visible. But my sense is EIL is in a very great sweet spot. You have seen crude go up suddenly. Uh, when OMCs are sitting with the kind of money that they had, they are no more going to enjoy themselves for the way they've done for the last two years. They will have to invest into backward integration and put a lot of money behind the refining side. And what's going to happen is scale is going to become critical in this business. So the smaller refineries will have to scale up or die. Okay. So when that happens, companies like EIL start, start getting a lot of businesses, a lot of order booking, which is that they, they, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they cross 21,000 crores by 2020 also, you know, which is mm -hmm. the next 15 months. And, and that translates into some very decent uh, uh, operating leverage coming in because you really don't have to deploy too much of assets to, to be able to execute that. And the margin trajectory will also improve because they have started focusing a lot on PMC, which is very similar to what NBCC does uh, on the construction infra side, uh, EIL does on the hydrocarbon side. So it's just project management consultancy which pays them much more, the ROEs are better. So all said and done, it's a great stock to have in your portfolio, but buy it on lower levels. How much lower would you say? So I would give it a range of 165 to 170, 175. Uh, also, potentially, if something goes wrong with the market, there's a correction which is significant enough. Uh, and this time around, uh, out of the picks that we have, quite a few are FNO items. Mm. So you also have the potential to hedge your, uh, uh, you know, uh, buying on the cash side. So EIL at that level would make sense. You could keep on accumulating. The target is about 222, 25, 222, 225, which, which is uh, not much from current levels. It will be about 25% from the level that I'm talking about. Okay, fair enough. So that's our second pick for 2018. Let's move to the third one. Amrish, you've chosen Cummins. Interestingly, I mean, the company was in news, and of course, M&A news right. was denied. Um, also going through a bit of a management overhaul and change. Right. What do you see ahead? Uh, more than the management overhaul, I think it is the sector which is under question. Uh, I mean, whenever you talk of uh, comments, you talk of combustion engines, internal combustion engines. And when you talk of that, the first thing which comes into your mind is EVs. Now, what happens to internal, internal combustion engines over the next couple of years? But yes, I think EVs will take over, no doubt. But that is still some time away. And uh, by the time uh, the internal combustion engines are completely out, I think it's going to be a couple of decades. So there is uh, still a good run left for Cummins. And at the same time, Cummins is also working on uh, I mean, uh, uh, like electrical engines. And uh, they are already testing out in the US. I think by next year, you'll have uh, most of their buses out there running on Cummins uh, electrical technology. So uh, clearly, their research and development is extremely strong. And uh, Cummins India clearly has an edge uh, from the parent. So looking at all this, uh, looking at uh, the way the Indian economy is expected to grow, because this is clearly linked to the Indian economy, because uh, with the infra growth, with the growth in railways, 
uh, clearly Cummins is going to, uh, uh, I mean, like benefit, no doubt. And uh, balance sheet is in an extremely good uh, position. I mean, hardly any debts. So looking at about uh, 20 rupees EPS for FI 19 and uh, about 24 for FI 20, uh, this stock should not be bought immediately because, like you rightly said, it had uh, like run up because of the rumors. So on some sort of a correction at uh, possible levels of about 860, 870, it could be bought for a target price of about 1,200 or so. All right, so that's the pick that we're getting in coming in from uh, Amrish. Cummins is the stock that he's looking at. He's saying that, in fact, maybe you could look to get into it uh, on a bit of a dip. But uh, let's get Merboon into this one then. Uh, Merboon, you're looking at a stock, Asian Granito. I remember the stock at around 50 rupees a few years ago. Then it had a big run. Promoters bought from the open market as well uh, towards the end of last year, Asian Granito. Uh, it trades at a bit of a discount to larger peers. You well, think that's think, good? Uh, this is a stock recommended earlier by me, and it never made me think more than a minute hmm. to take a call. That this is also a stock which I would like to be loyal to and believe that this stock should be at least a 750 to 800 rupees stock over the next 12 months. All right. I think uh, Asian Granito, let's look at it, is the third most profitable tile company in India. And it is the fourth largest in terms of turnover. Because in turnover, I think Johnson is ahead of it. The company has achieved this, worked very hard over the last two, three years, has reaped, has merged various subsidiaries, it has concentrated on introducing new products, has concentrated on high margin products, expanded into new geographies, expanded its dealer network, and worked on enhancing its brand presence. Earning per share of 13 rupees, question mark, 2016-17, 13 rupees, why should the stock be at 530, 540? The reason is I believe the company should report uh, CAGR growth of at least 40% over the next two, three years. And I will not be surprised if the company has an earning per share of around 35 to 40 rupees by 2020. Now, what valuation do you give? 20, the price is 800. At 35, the price is 700. The stock is right now 520. And I do believe that yes, as and when the market has a, uh, suffers a minor accident, the stock should correct 5, 10%. So what? As long as I see a price of 700 or 750 or even an 800, why should I bother about a 5, 10% correction? Because people have been waiting for a correction for quite some time and the stock has run away, like you rightly said. So at 525, 540, 545, I see a price of 750 to 800, which is my target. I think I'm an investor in the stock. Market Valas are here to give you some top ideas for the year 2018, 18 stock that you can bet on to create more wealth and add more glitter to your portfolio. We're four down, let's move to the next round then, and I'm going to come back to uh, Mr. Tulsian. Mr. Tulsian, the next stock that's on your list is Akshar Chem. Uh, interesting place, speciality chemicals. I was trying to do whatever little reading I could after the market. Uh, so vinyl sulfone, I believe, is a big product for them. What could be the triggers here for this company? No, in fact, I would say that the company has two product profiles. One is dyes and pigment, and second is dye intermediate. If you take the dyes and pigments, CPC green, CPC blues are the main products, and if you take dye intermediates, then vinyl sulfone forms the p p big, big, this one. They are, in fact, pouring into the H acid also which is the, again, a dye intermediate, plus they are pouring into precipitated silica also. Under the expansion, company is carrying out an expansion of about 175 crore, which should get completed maybe in six months' time. And in fact, in spite of such a big capex, company will remain a debt-free, because for the simple reason that they raised about 69 crores with a QIP, having made in the month of July, at 776. And now the share is ruling closure to about 700 rupees. And if you see last year, that is FY17, had a fabulous year for the dye intermediates, largely because of the price increase in the prices of like vinyl sulfone, H acid, J acid, gamma acid. And in fact, many of the players, pure the dye intermediates have really shown excellent numbers. So while comparing YOY, in spite of company having posted an EPS of 21 rupees for H1, the share price has corrected because obviously market had a disappointment because there was a drop of about maybe 50% in the pat and the share corrected from a top of 990 to the present level of 700. But if you see the theme for going for the dyes intermediates and dyes and pigments, both are doing very well. They have fought, they are the 
largest exporter of vinyl cell phone from India, having 45% market share. Plus, they are having a, one amongst the largest uh, producer of CPC green amongst the world, having 10% market share. So once they will be having this expansion completed in next, next six to eight months, their top line will increase by about 80%, giving excellent operating leverage. As I said, company will continue to remain, uh, remain debt-free. So if I have an H1 a EPS of 21, H2 is definitely better because of the increase seen in the realization and margin of dyes and pigments and dye intermediates. So take 45 rupees as EPS for FY18. For FY19, I think that will be a real big explosion in earnings. And I won't be surprised to see an EPS of about 75 to 80 also for FY19. And that will really be a big kicker for the company to post growth in its top line as well as in bottom line. Maybe top line will show a growth of about 60-65%, bottom line will show a growth of about 80-85%. So taking that into consideration, share can give you a level of about 880 in next six months or so, which is now ruling closure to about 700 rupees. Okay, all right. Uh, that's a pick from the chemical space. As Mr. Tulsian said, well, it's corrected from the recent peak. And in fact, he believes that going ahead second half of the year, as well as FY19, will look quite promising. But uh, Prakash, let's get your second pick uh, for today. Well, Kirloskar Ferris, uh, capacity utilization levels uh, lower, so it's giving them that headroom. And I think balance sheet, not too bad. Yeah, don't steal away my thunder. Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, with you around, I couldn't help myself but get a metal pick. You, <laughs> you've been so good at picking metal stocks. And I think the rally on metals will possibly continue and percolate now from the large caps to some of the select mid caps, small caps also. In fact, this is one of the very few uh, small caps that I felt uh, still hasn't got re-rated uh, crazily upwards and, and, and lost out on, on the potential to buy in. Now, what's good about this company is, one is, of course, the pedigree is very strong. And as you said, financials uh, are in place. They have decent cash on the books, a debt-equity ratio of just about 0.3. Uh, they would move into return ratios of 20 plus, 20 percent plus, 21 percent in the next year, year and a half. Uh, they are into castings and pig iron. They're two primary businesses. Right. Now, the pig iron business is uh, very simple to, uh, to, to kind of understand. But uh, the moment application of uh, steel goes up, uh, the conversion from iron ore to other forms of steel needs big iron. You know, that's an intermediate stage that you have to go through. Yeah. Now, what was happening is the Karnataka unit, which was there since a long time, never had uh, order books which are very decent. But there's a lot of these mines that have reopened in, around Bellary and all that. And that's uh, giving them a huge advantage. So they'll get operating leverage. And as you said, castings, they're using 50% capacity. They've already done enough capex. They don't need to put in more money. Uh, and castings, what do they make? They supply a lot of equipment to agri-equipment uh, manufacturers. So, okay. so it's tractors, uh, tillers, and, and that's an area which all of us love. You know? mm. So we know how much uh, there's, there's so much of uh, upside there. So this is in a sweet spot, has a very good relationship with clients for long years, Kirloskar pedigree to back it. And interestingly, last quarter, some of the DIIs increased their stake in this business also. So I think it's, it's probably in that stage where it's getting kind of you know, uh, ready to take off. Uh, I, I would give it a target of about 145, 150 uh, whereabouts. But you could buy this at current levels or at dips. And definitely, it will be uh, seeing some major moves uh, for the 2018 kind of uh, period. Okay, Kirloskar Ferris, that's one more for you. Let's move to Amrish's next pick. And uh, Amrish here, are you trying to pick the bottom for this one, I guess? Because it's a non-performing stock. Right. Videocon is what we're talking about. Yeah, dish. Suffering uh, a dish, dish, dish which will merge with Videocon. I mean, Arpoos have been suffering. We know the story. Right. But everybody's waiting what happens after the merger. If right. then, you know, there's a marked change in the business. Yeah, but then, see, uh, generally sectors like these pass through a couple of phases. The first phase is when there are too many competitors, everyone vying for, I mean, for the same market, margins are under pressure, and then uh, you get into a phase of uh, consolidation, and uh, what we have also seen, Dish taking over Videocon. So post the phase of consolidation, you normally have the margins starting to move up, and that's what I see happening as far as Dish is concerned. Uh, secondly, we have seen that the, uh, I mean, ARPUs were bad, they are improving, and uh, they have stabilized at this point of time. So I expect that to improve going ahead. Uh, then thirdly, you have these MSOs, which were a major competition, and there was a huge arbitrage uh, in the pricing of MSOs as, I mean, as compared to uh, the dish uh, ones. 
So that arbitrage is reduced, so which is also positive for DISH. Uh, we are, I mean, expecting that Doordarshan, which is free to air, may not remain free to air going ahead. So looking at all this and the sort of uh, subscriber additions they have been doing in the past couple of years, I mean, that has been superb. Uh, although our crews were not up to the mark, but uh, subscriber additions are superb. So I think that will start paying off now. Because even if ARPUs move up by either, say, 10 to 15 rupees, that's a huge addition to the bottom line. So I, uh, and, and, uh, I think the most important thing what has happened is on the valuation front. Uh, because, I mean, all of them were getting decently low valuations, but with the Warburg Pinkers deal, we are clearly seeing that DISH, is, DISH seems extremely cheap as compared to uh, Airtel DTH. I mean, looking at the valuations they're given. So that valuation gap also is there. So from that point of view, I think this stock can move up from current levels of closer to about 80 to 110, 120, which is a conservative estimate for possibly the next uh, 8 to 12 months. But if you're looking at uh, EPS for FI20, which I expect to be about 4.5, uh, 5 rupees, I mean, at uh, that point of time, you could possibly see the stock at much higher levels. Right, uh, Amrish, uh, but uh, would you buy the stock on the dip or at current levels it provides? Think, it's already I, been struggling think, yeah, through the what, year. I think so. at these levels there's no harm. Okay. But generally what I recommend is buy in various tranches. Don't buy everything in, at, at one go because this market, uh, I mean, has a lot of fluctuations. So uh, I think you should buy in possibly about four to five tranches, whatever you buy. Okay, all right. Then so that's the dish that served for 2018 uh, from uh, Amrish. But... Let's move on to the next pick then. Uh, Merbon, uh, you've got a chemicals company that you're looking at. And uh, you know, when I was growing up, I used to watch a lot of CNBC TV 18. And a couple of factors. One is promoters increasing stake. And if it has a clean balance sheet, those two factors always uh, stood out from the simplest investing point of view. What's the pick you have next? I think, Nigel, I think you've worked already on this company. And I would say that I'm very congo on this stock. The company's name is Phenotex Chemical Limited, which is also known as FCL. Uh, let's put it this way, the company is one of India's largest textile chemical manufacturer which provides customized solution to the entire gamut of activities in the textile sector. It services a customer base which is in a way sticky. It doesn't move to any other chemical manufacturer so easy. It has a high pricing power, therefore higher margins. It has got its manufacturing facilities in Navi, Mumbai, and also a subsidiary called Biotex in Malaysia, where the company has got a 68% stake. It is a star export house, has presence in 33 countries, and what you rightly said, balance sheet, absolutely clean, 22 crore equity, 11 crore shares because 11 crore shares because it's a two rupees face value, zero debt consistent dividend paying company earning per share of around 1 rupee 80 paise last year should at least become two and a half this year and should move to at 3.5 to 4 rupees next year and this is without one major trigger which i'm coming to i think early this month in the very same place bombay stock exchange the company was rewarded as the fastest growing chemical manufacturer in india now, the company has developed a product in Malaysia using European design engineering, which is styled as Equastrike VCF. Let me explain to you what this Equastrike VCF is. This is an environment-friendly, non-toxic, revolutionary solution, which doesn't kill mosquitoes alone, but kills the larvae and the pupae of mosquitoes, completely eradicates mosquitoes. The Ministry of Health in Malaysia has already given it the go-ahead. It can be used by common citizens like you and me directly. It is a non-pesticide, not poisonous to humans, and they already affected sales in Singapore and Malaysia. The company has applied for patent and has applied also to the WHO. And the numbers as far as the financials goes, which I have mentioned, is without taking into account any sale from this product. But I believe this product has the potential to deliver the business of billions of dollars in the years to come for this company. 22 crores equity, again I repeat, with zero debt, promoters have increased their stake from 62% to 72% over the last four years. 
They declared a bonus issue in 2014-15 and have reserves of over rupees 100 crores on an equity of 22 crores. I think with an earnings of 2.5 rupees coming in the current year, which can go to 3.8 as I lightly mentioned, the stock at 50-52 is a clear steal and I think a price of 80 to even a 125 can come over the next 12 months. Oh, wow, so the 90% odd appreciation is just the beginning. There's, there's a lot more ahead, as you're saying. Even at this price, we can buy it. I think so. Okay. Well, we're done with eight, but we have still got a date with uh, our four panelists. Uh, so let's get straight to Mr. Tulsian. Uh, Mr. Tulsian, you're looking at a cement company. Uh, give us details there. What's the target price? In fact, we have been keeping extremely bullish view on cement. And in fact, uh, I won't be surprised to see the average uh, capacity utilization, which is now seen at around 70% across India, will get increased to about 85%. And in that theme, JK Cement, in, in fact, what is happening, market is giving good valuation to the companies having capacity of 10 million ton. In fact, there are three layers, 10 million, 25 million, and 50 million. And uh, 50 million and above only falls one company that is Ultratech. And there are many companies in a 25 million space and 10 million also. So if you take a call on this company, they have a 10 and a half million gray cement capacity. Apart from that, they are into white cement also with a capacity of 6 lakh ton per annum with a 45% market share. And if you take a call on white cement, it's a duopoly market. Only two players are there. One is JK Cement, second is Ultratech. Apart from that, they have the wall putty of 7 lakh ton per annum. And in fact, the financial performance for the first half, generally cement companies are posting an EPA, you know, whatever earnings of about 33 to 40% in first half and with not a significant growth having seen in any of the companies for this H1, FY18, if I really take a call. But this company has shown extremely better numbers for H1, FY18 over H1, FY17. And if I just take a call, 15 rupees EPS was last year in the first half, and this year it is 25 rupees. And second half, they had about 25 rupees. So if you take in all about 37, 38 rupees, EPS which they have posted for FY17, they are going to end this FY18 with a, with a EPS of about 60 rupees. Now come on the financials, very low equity at about maybe 70 crore with a face value of 10 rupees, and market capitalization and or the EV, is quite low, seen at about 7,600 crore as market cap, and EV at 9,100 crore. And that translates into cement per, per ton capacity at about $110. But the best part is that company has already taken up the capacity expansion to 14 million ton, and that should get completed in maybe next 12 months or so. And I'm expecting that uh, company has given a, a capital outlay of about 1,500 crore, which translates at about maybe $65 per ton. And since the company has cash accrual of about maybe 900,000 crore, they should be, you know, largely have uh, this entire capex of 1,500 crore from their internal accruals. That means not uh, increasing the uh, debt, uh, debt uh, keeping the debt at constant level of 1,500 crore. And excellent, you know, maybe for FY19, I won't be surprised to see the EPS moving to about 78 to 82 rupees, which, which is likely to be at about 58 to 60 for FY18. So taking all this into consideration, share is likely to give a level of about 1370 in 2018, which is now ruling at sub-1100 rupees. Okay, so that's JK Cement, a pick from the cement pack. Uh, Prakash. Okay, now finally time to pin you down because incidentally we were just having a discussion on the show today. Yeah. Prakash likes aviation, but he wouldn't give us a stock name till now. So let's hear it. Yeah, so that was still market hours. Yes. Uh, and then, <laughs> no, my, I, I'm very positive on the fact that uh, this is a extremely uh, difficult and, and risky business and, and we still have the listed players doing very well. Hmm. And the reason is uh, uh, because we are probably at the takeoff stage for the entire sector, you know, as a, as a theme within the country. And I was quite surprised, pleasantly so, to, to hear that Indigo has been the first company to have taken off 1,000 flights in a day. A 1,000 flights in a day is, is really big. And, and uh, very few companies have been able to do this in such a short span of time. But here we are not talking about Indigo. The pick that I have is Jet, Jet Airways. Jet Airways, despite the run-up, that's what I think, despite this massive run on the crude, stock already. On crude, yeah. So, on, on Jet Airways itself. No, but see, <laughs> it's like this, uh, sir. We, everybody is expecting uh, Indigo to be so well performing that if there's any slippage uh, in, in their performance uh, metrics, people will punish it. But if Jet does even half as good, hmm. they want to reward it amply. Absolutely. So that's the whole expectation from Jet because it's been a down and out. So people who have flown Jet Airways know that it's primarily because of the uh, connections that they have in certain sectors and the JP miles that you get. 
that most business class, uh, uh, you know, in, uh, travelers also like uh, this thing and the corporate side. But my sense is Jet has started doing a lot of things in terms of cutting down costs. The efficiencies would change dramatically. And if you have a KLM or an Air France or somebody bailing them out on the balance sheet, so apart from PNL, the balance sheet will also start getting repaired uh, quite well. And uh, if you notice quietly, there's been a reconstitution of the board itself. So from a lot of people who are just uh, iconic names and generalists uh, sitting on the board, they've actually got people with experience from aviation and similar uh, uh, sectors. And that's driving things very rapidly. So if JET transforms itself, it will get rewarded uh, very, very easily. So I'm, I'm expecting that to be a turnaround story. So of how, how much more in 2018? I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to that 1100 uh, kind of a mark as well. So I know it's, it's already moved quite well, but it will be volatile. It's not going to be a smooth ride, but uh, it will reward if people patiently hold on to it, especially this year. Okay, all right. So Prakash is suggesting that, in fact, you take off uh, from here with Jet Airways. But you can't keep banking out of this. Amrish, your next pick, a banking pick? Yeah, it's uh, Karu Vesa Bank. So I would say this is a prime example of why you should stick to your core competence, why you should do what you know best. Because uh, they understand retail and SME, but they wanted to get into big ticket, and that is where they've got stuck with NPAs now. Mm. The other thing is, as far as banking is concerned, uh, clearly, I mean, this is true for a number of other sectors, but especially banking, it clearly depends on who's leading it. And we have seen this happening in, in Indusind, Mr. Mr. Uh, Sopti took over, and then you saw Indusind doing extremely well. Federal Bank, more recent, uh, Sham Srinivasan took over, has been doing decently well. So here also there's a change of management at the top. Mr. Sheshadri has joined in, who has uh, years of experience with City, and uh, he's expected to change the face of the bank. And now with the clear focus, again, back on SME and uh, retail, I actually expect this uh, bank to start doing well, possibly after a gap of another three or four quarters. That, I mean, that is the time it will require to clean up. Mm -hmm. Looking at an EPS of about eight for FI19 and about 14 for uh, FI20. Yeah. So again, looking at the capital adequacy, which is uh, at a decent level, there, there has been infusion of funds uh, through rights. Uh, so I expect uh, the bank to uh, maintain those uh, NIMS currently and expect that to move up uh, in FI 19 and 20 because of which uh, you'll have the EPS uh, moving up. So I think the downside at these levels is very minimal. I think that's what one should look at whenever you're buying uh, stocks at uh, Sensex uh, 34,000. So upside I'm looking at is about 160 mm -hmm. in the next 9 to 12 months. Okay. Now staying with the banking and financial services theme, Meraboon's next pick, Meraboon Edelweiss. Now, already up 200%, so I want to understand what do you think is the biggest driving factor? Is, is it simply a growth play? I think it's been very consistently positive on Edelweiss. I think uh, CNBC was a channel where I had recommended first time at maybe around 120 rupees. 120 became 300. A colleague in the office told me, sir, you're being greedy by recommending the stock all over again. I said, yes, bond yields at the level at which they are. Inflation could become a dirty word at least in the first half of 2018 interest rates, possibly the cycle could turn. Should I actually recommend Edelweiss? And my answer was 100% yes, very confident. Can the stock come down by 10, 15%? Certainly yes. But will it be a 450 rupees stock, which is my target over the next 12 months? Answer is again yes. So I think 290 becoming 450, it's happening, it will happen. And uh, Edelweiss is not the small player in the capital market segment, which it was years ago. It has evolved itself, it's gone into lending business, started with wholesale lending, now into retail lending, where it is meeting with a lot of traction. Point number two, it is into asset management business, wealth management business, but the biggest trigger is the stressed assets business, where the company is number one by a big distance over the number two and number three player. As far as insurance business goes, I think the losses should peak out over the next 12 months. And the biggest contributor apart from the asset reconstruction stress assets business over the next two years according to me could come from the wealth management business the advisory business and the asset management business earnings could show an exponential growth over the next two three years it's difficult to quantify it current year should be a 10 rupees eps which should possibly become maybe even a 20 rupees in the next two years i don't rule it out 
So at 290 rupees, looking at it, like you rightly said, Surbi, 100 becomes 290. Should I buy into it? The answer is if it's going to become 450, why should I possibly bother of a 230, 240, 250 coming again? I would put it that way. It's very difficult to time stocks like Edelweiss, which is showing exponential growth. So I will stick to it and recommend it as one of the best picks of mine for 2018 also. 18 for 18. Yes, 18 stock ideas for the year 2018. So let's keep going. We've got six more bets lined up for you. Uh, Mr. Thulsian, I'm coming to your next pick, and that's JP Infra. I mean, very interesting. People are wondering how it will eventually all play out through the courts and you know through the, the bankruptcy proceed proceedings. What is the sense and what's the trigger here? See, take this as a wild card entry. Mm -hmm. And if you really take the situation, two stocks, I'll quickly, I'm not trying to give any comparison. The two stocks, one is DB Realty and second is Arcom. The moment we have seen any kind of favorable indications coming in, either by way of favorable 2G orders, DB moved up by about 60% in two days or three days. Arcom, the moment we have seen the debt resolution scene happening, stock moved up by about 100% in this last couple of weeks. Now, if I just quickly come on JP Infra, since I have been given just one minute, the company has 165 kilometer Yapuna Expressway with a residual concession period of 30 years. Generally, in all road projects, you have a total concession period of 20 years. Here it is, it was 36 years of which they have completed six years. So they have a residual concession period of 30 years. Apart from that, they have 27 crore square feet of land under development at five locations. One in Greater Noida, two parcels in Gautam Buddha Nagar, one in Aligarh and one in Agra. And if you really take a call right now, affordable housing is the only sector where the tax-free income is allowed by the government of India. None other sectors have that. Of these 27 crore square feet, company has only taken up development of 6 crore square feet for which the litigation in Supreme Court is going on. Supreme Court earlier directed the JP Associates, the promoter, to deposit 2,000 crore. But then they have reduced that to 550 crore, of which 425 crore has already been deposited. I don't think that 125 crore being the last installment is going to get default by the promoter that is JP Associates on 25th January. Apart from that, 20 potential acquirers, you just name who is who, they are you know, lined up to take up this company. They are going to be quite aggressive because two portfolio, one is 21 crore residual, fare, this one, uh, 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 square feet of land under development and 165 kilometer. Today, if you all have read the report, about 5,000 flats will be delivered by the group by March 18. Of them, some of the flats are of JP Associates also, some of the JP Interfa also. So once you have any kind of uh, uh, resolution seen in sight coming and you will see the stock just running up, I just gave those two examples, the way it moves up on the downside, even on a valuation kind of basis, if you take 500, 600 rupees square feet land development, that is seen to be quite low. So given a target of 24 in the year 2018, but one can even you know keep a time horizon on the stock till 2018 to see maybe higher gains apart uh, uh, more than uh, 24 also. Okay, thanks so, so much for that, Mr. Tulsi. And Prakash, coming to you next, uh, you're picking up uh, Camlin. The stock has uh, flattered in the past to only deceive ultimately, but this time you believe it's good for more. Yeah, because it's it's been a legard of sorts. Camlin Fine Sciences. You know, let me let me run you quickly through what it does, and then that's what makes it so compellingly attractive. This company is the third largest player in antioxidants and food flavors. Okay, I mean, which is which is something that is uh, very unique in terms of chemistry, and it's not easy to uh, replicate. The problem with them was that they have not been able to scale up. Mm. Uh, but what's now happened is that the Dahej unit in Gujarat, uh, that has got, there's a financial closure they've been able to manage. They, they raised some money through a promoter preferential allotment and some QIP, which was very small though. Now, once it gets into this whole value chain from raw material to final food blending, and especially in the export markets in the US and all, and then you all know that US is picking up dramatically, mm. uh, and it's expected to do so in 2018. I was looking at a theme which is linked to the U.S. growth story, and we also into chemicals, and had no competition, and this kind of qualified. My sense is it could see a growth of about 30% uh, on, on, on revenues, and the EBITDA could probably double in these next uh, 18 months. So that's where the story lies. Even if you discount FI20 earnings, uh, uh, which is 15 months away, uh, 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 probably, you know, with even 21, 22, you get a target price of 199, 200, which is, which is a decent upside from where it is. So hopefully, uh, it, it, it'll make the right noises and not disappoint this time. Okay. 
Uh, that's Camlin Fine Sciences. Moving to Ambrish's next pick. Yeah. I must say, I really like their tagline. It's the way you make me feel, Monte Carlo. <laughs> but uh, coming to the stock itself, I think the yeah. issue price was 645, if I'm not mistaken. Stock's gone through its own journey. It's, it's been an underdog completely. What's and the trigger? What's changing now? Uh, see, uh, I mean, we remember Monte Carlo only during winters. Yeah. And that's the time we, we hear about it. So clearly, the business, is, business was seasonal. And uh, what, uh, I mean, affects this, uh, I mean, if you look at the other sectors, they, they get affected by the economy. So this gets affected by the economy as well as the weather. Mm. So if you have a weak winter, it affects the sales. And that's what has, had happened in the last two years. But now, uh, since the last couple of years, they've been also trying to move out of that mm -hmm. and get into co uh, uh, cotton fabrics in a large way. But uh, that summer was not very successful. But now with their revised strategy, I expect that things should fall in place. Uh, they're increasing their institutional sales, increasing uh, their EBO uh, footprint, uh, getting into more of sub-brands, uh, ladies and kids wear. Mm. So I think uh, this should uh, really work out well for them because the initial uh, sort of uh, feedback which has come has been quite decent. So looking at an EPS of about 36 rupees for FI19 and about 49 rupees for FI20, it looks very cheap compared to, I mean, other branded players. So I think this is because of the history, but I think it should catch up. So I think at these levels, it looks decently cheap. Possibly you could see, I mean, have a downside of about 5 to 7%, which is there with any stock. But looking at a price of about 740 over the next 9 to 12 months. Okay, we'll keep an eye out then on the quarter three numbers. Last year was impacted by demonetization. So this one's going to be quite interesting. Well, um, Mehrboon, let's come across to you, Sterling Technologies, that's the one you like? Again, consistently positive on the stock, and the reason is that one can defend the valuations because the growth is going to keep on coming. I think as a global leader, number one, in telecommunication equipment, which includes optic fiber, optic fiber cables, data cables. The company has operations mainly in India, China, and Brazil, but has marketing network nearly across the world. Global demand continues to be robust from China, which has 55% of market globally, and also from Europe and US. The company works on three platforms. Number one is the product, number two is the services, and number three is the software vertical. The company, despite having made a lovely capacity expansion, doesn't have any stress in the balance sheet with the debt equity less than one. The company should be spending at least rupees 10 billion on further expanding capacity over the next two to three years. And I promise you, I believe that the debt equity will become more comfortable despite spending that kind of money. The earnings this year should be eight rupees, nine rupees, but I will not be surprised if this earnings double over the next two years to 17 to 20 rupees by FY20. I believe that if one tries to look at the traditional EPS manner, 7, 8 rupees, going at 290, stock looks expensive, I believe the market will continue to give it a thumbs up, which it has given in 2017, because of the growth which this company will report. Also, Digital India, the favorite concept of our Prime Minister, should bring in more and more orders coming from within the country also. So I think Sterlite is on a good wicket. Again, the stock can it correct by 10%? Who can stop it? You and I cannot stop it. But 250, 260, 290, 300, but I believe the stock has the potential to be a 450 to 500 rupees stock over the next 12 months. All right. Thanks, Mehraboon, for that. Uh, Mr. Tulsian, let's come to your last pick, uh, Cineline. Your thoughts See, this, this is purely a real estate company, and if I just go through quickly, they have nine cinema halls in Mumbai, Thane, and Nashik, and all are leased to PVR. So they are getting a fixed annuity income. Apart from that, they have 84,000 square feet of saleable area booked in Kanakia Wall Street. This is again a, a, a commercial complex coming on the Wall Street concept, which will get leased out by them maybe for about 15 crore on annuity, and the possession should be given to them maybe in the next about 12 months or so. Third property which they are owning is a shopping mall in Nagpur, which is 90-95% occupied. They intend to monetize, and the, and the amount which is estimated to get realized is about 250 crore. In fact, if you see amongst the realty space, generally, you know, either they don't have the earning or they are over leveraged. But in case of this company, they have consistent EPS of 4 rupees on an annualized basis, and the debt is just 130, 140 crore, with market cap of 310 crore, EV of about maybe 440, 450 crore. 
and if you take the conservative valuations because as i said nine cinema halls are all going to get developed maybe every couple of years some one or the other property which will keep giving them the further monetization of each property as well so the net present value of the properties insiders or maybe the the experts are estimating to be at about 1250 1300 crore promoter stake is quite high at 70% so taking all these into consideration share now ruling at 109 can be looked to have a target of 136 in uh, in the 2018 Okay, all right. Thanks so much for that, Mr. Tulsiyal. And finally, the 18th stock uh, is a Nifty stock. It uh, did yes. well. It was welcomed into the Nifty. After that, it's not done much. Prakash, yeah, I believe so it's good for more. This is UPL. Uh, as you said, did well, but it's just come into the Nifty. So there's still a long way to go. Uh, what actually worked against them and which which brought the stock down was uh, they had a lot of these one-off uh, expenditure, which which came on account of some legal issues, battles that they were fighting in Europe on patents and all. Uh, but their new product development has been so robust that once the Latin American and North American market takes off for them, which, which there are initial you know signs of uh, that moving, very soon you will see this company getting re-rated very wholeheartedly. You know, whatever has been taken away from it, it will probably come back to it in a significant way. So it's a nifty stock. Risk reward is favorable. Discounted 16, 17 times on FI 20, you'll still get uh, probably thousand bucks as a target, which is 50 percent from where it is now. You know, so I, I love the setup. It's a biocon of 2018. The uh, biocon of 2018. So okay, that's going to resonate. We, you know, it kind of you know surprise people because it's not done anything. Nobody is bought into it, but uh, great pedigree and and great product line as well. All right. Well, all of our market experts are market fathers. Thank you so much. It's not easy, as we all know. Stock picking is not an easy game. So, big round of applause to all our experts. Well with that we have to draw the proceedings of the evening to a close thanks very much to our guests thanks to the audience and our viewers of course we wish all of you a very very happy and prosperous new year 2018 thanks for being with us